Well, this is the Harvard Business Publishing uh, website. And uh, this is the title of the course pack, Global Business Negotiation. <coughs> so you go into this, it's called Course Pack, and then you can see some book or here is 3D Negotiation, Powerful Tools to Change the Game. So that's the book, right? So you can, after you pay the $17, you can download the book. Okay. The book is aimed at the native speakers, so it may be a little bit difficult, but after the class, if you like to study, or study English, it's good material to study because that's the kind of English they use in uh, negotiation. So you don't have to understand every word, right? You don't have to, you can read through and try to understand the main ideas and points. So this is the book, right? This book used for the internet or download the other. What do you mean? Uh, this book, I can read this book on, on the internet. Oh well, no, you can download the, <coughs> the PDF file, then print out the PDF file of the book. Okay. So, so let's start with the overview of the course today. So. Let's start by talking about the different types of negotiation or outcomes in any negotiation. So have you heard before of win-win and win-lose and lose-lose? Lose-win. <coughs> so if we make a square, here we have win-win. So we have A and B, right? A wins and B wins. Then we have a choice here of win-lose. A wins, B lose, B lose right? <coughs> then here we have another choice of, this time lose-win. A loses, B wins, so similar to win-lose, right? And then the worst case, we have lose-lose, where both people lose. Okay, so the traditional way of looking at negotiations is here win-win or win-lose. Some people want to get this result. For example, if it's just a one-time negotiation, they might want to win-lose, right? But this one is the most popular one, win-win. We have a longer-term relationship with people. We want them to win too, and us to win too. Then everybody is happy. Because if we make a win-lose, maybe they're not happy. They might not even do their side of the deal. Why? They might not complete the agreement, or they might use a worse quality material. So let's say that I'm BMW, A, BMW, you know BMW? Yes, yes. He is a tire manufacturer. Do you understand tire? Yes. In, in Korea, Hanguk, is that correct? Except, except, hmm? except. Except? Except. N E X N E X N. I only buy. I usually buy the handle tire. Base work. Base work. Makes sense. Uh, they make tires. Yes. For cars. That's funny. I didn't hear about that. But I see handle a lot. So, for example, handle is selling tires to BMW, right? Green company. Do you think? What's the advantage of win-win negotiation? For, B, for BMW. <coughs> Partnership. So if we have a win-win, they can make... What do you mean by that? Partnership. They make contract between them. Yes. They make a contract. Supply the tire and buy the tire from them. Yes. But doesn't BMW just want to get the win lose? Just get a good price? very low price tire, make sure that BMW makes a big profit 
and hang up makes a small profit. Does BMW want to do that? Hmm? Why not? That's the question. So you said partnership, so you mean a long-term relationship kind of thing, right? What's the advantage of having a good long-term relationship? Average quality is quality to supply The quality might be higher. Yes. Okay. So we have quality. And there any other advantage? The BMW want new tire. The Hong tire study the study more new tire. Okay, so they can adapt. They can adapt to the wants of the other company, right? They're happy to help them with their new requirements. Any other positive point of BMW making a win-win negotiation? The reputation of BMW for dealing with other suppliers. Okay, so other suppliers might say BMW has a good reputation. They're nice to their suppliers, so I'll also make <coughs> business with them. Anything else? So what's the risk? If BMW makes a win-lose negotiation with Hangul, BMW can afford to pay more money, right? But they say, no, just I want to make more profit, so I'm going to be a very hard negotiator. Do you understand hard negotiator? We say play hardball. Do you know baseball? Yes. Do you know softball? Yes. On hardball in baseball? In the US, they use a lot of sports vocabulary. <coughs> So, sorry girls, <laughs> that's just the way it is. In the US, maybe it could be that the UK is slightly more feminist country than the US, why? Right? But in the US they use more sports vocabulary than the UK, often using business. So you need to understand about sports sometimes. So, do you understand the difference between softball and hardball in baseball? Do you play baseball? Yes. In softball, you throw the ball underhand, right? It's easy. You throw the ball and they hit the ball back. Hardball, you throw the ball like from the top, right? Actually, they don't play baseball in Ireland, so I have to learn about that kind of thing too, right? If I go to the US. So, you can get the idea. Softball, I'm being nice to you, I throw the ball. So, we talk about play hardball in a negotiation means that the other side is not being nice, they just want to win, right? They want to win and they want you to lose. It's called playing hardball. So if BMW plays hardball with Hank Cook tires, what's the risk for BMW? What could be the problem? Any profit. They're not sure if they make some profit. In the end, Hankook doesn't make any profit. They make a loss. They lose money. What's the risk for BMW? No, yes, Hankook tires can go bankrupt or go out of business. Then what happens to BMW? Maybe they're not able to deliver their cars because they have to find another supplier. But they need tires today to deliver the cars, right? But it's going to take a while to find another supplier. So that's a risk, right? Just, we already mentioned about quality. Hanko could say, well, we're losing money here in this deal with BMW. So we need to make a profit. So let's use lower quality material for our tires. Don't tell BMW, okay? Then 
there's some accident, BMW gets a problem also, right? Uh, they could just try to skip some stage, skip some step, or do things in the bad way, or just not deliver. They could just say to BMW, we can't, I know we agreed to the contract, but I'm afraid we can't do it anymore. So, we can understand that win-win is more popular a strategy than win-lose. Okay, some people like to use a win-lose strategy if it's just a one-off negotiation. Let's say you're buying a second-hand car, just you're going to do it just once in your life, or something like that, right? Then you want to get the low price. Could be you want to do this kind of one. Now this one is more like bullying. Do you understand bullying? Are you bullying people? Are you a bully? Hmm? No. This is cooperation. Hmm? There are some bullies in school, right? Especially in the high school or middle school, so people bully each other. It's a problem. Were you guys bullying other students in school? No. No? Okay. You understand bullying? Yes, you, maybe I have more power. BMW, I'm a big car company, so I can have a lot of power. So it gives me the power that I can bully the smaller supplier, okay? if I want. Uh, otherwise, I can just cooperate with them. So <laughs> this is a win-lose. You can buy books. You can buy a lot of books about negotiation. Like I already recommended, you should buy an Amazon Kindle. I think it's good for your life. I bought one a few years ago. It's a large amount of money to pay at the start, $100. But you can keep it for years, right? And you can buy the books for cheaper. The paperback book is about double the price of the ebook. And also you can get a lot of free books. So I buy a lot of books on Amazon for a cheap price. Like, do you know Ernest Hemingway? Yes. Famous art author. I can buy all of his books for just $4. Right? Or F. Scott Fitzgerald, that kind of thing. Right? But you can buy these kind of books on Amazon. Right? Winning through intimidation. Do you understand intimidation? <clears throat> Intimidate somebody means to make them afraid or a little bit scared. See, there is a famous case of intimidation in the, in the Premier League. Do you know Roy Keane, Patrick Vieira? In sports, the sports players often use the intimidation before the game. Right? They shout at each other, or they line up against each other. So we can look at a, an example of that. These are two guys who play, uh, famous players who play soccer for Manchester United and Arsenal. Maybe some of the guys know them. Have you heard of Patrick Vieira? No? The internet is a little bit slow today for some reason. Maybe it caught a virus.
intimidating? Hmm? Would you be intimidated by that guy? Hmm? He's a famous guy for intimidating people. So he's fighting and uh, shouting at the player. Right. Okay. Again, he's trying to intimidate the other people. So, do you understand intimidate? Yes. Do you intimidate people? No. Do you try to intimidate people? No. <laughs> so, the book is called uh, Winning by Intimidation. So you can get some book which advises people to intimidate other people. And if people are intimidated, then they might uh, make lose, right? Lose the game or lose the negotiation. So, just a second, the bar has disappeared. Do you know how to make the bar reappear? Can anybody know on Windows? <coughs> okay. Press this button. Two. Up twice. Okay. Thank you. So we might get a better deal. We might win, or we might get a better deal some other time if we intimidate other people. Do you have a family member or a friend who is intimidating? Yes. Yes? <laughs> Do you think they get a good deal or a better deal? <laughs> Both of my sisters, I hope they're not going to watch the video. Right? I don't think so. <laughs> but both, both of my sisters are quite intimidating. Even my mother is afraid of my sisters. Right? <laughs> They can say some very mean thing or threaten, right? That kind of thing. So especially my older sister, when I was growing up, she tried to intimidate or that kind of thing. So one time when she was 24, my younger brother was just 10 or 11. She was also fighting with him <laughs> because she wants to watch something on the TV. He, doesn't, he wants to watch something else. So even though he's just a kid, she fight fighting with him, take the control. <laughs> right? So quite intimidating. So she can win, right? She got to watch what she wants on the TV. What's the problem? Savage <laughs> relationships, right? But maybe she can't have such a good relationship then with her brothers or sisters later. Okay? In the long term. So it's the same in, in uh, it's the same in negotiating. Okay? We can also miss creative agreements. There could have been some way that you could solve the problem. For example, my sister could record her show and watch later. But because we're just thinking about win lose, we don't find any creative way to solve the problem. Okay? And maybe deadlock. Maybe somebody breaks the TV, right? Nobody can watch what they want, and we end up with lose-lose. So if we try this way, uh, we might get a better deal. Some people want to negotiate this way, and some people write books advising you to negotiate this way. Uh, so we're not going to teach this way in the class, but just we should understand that some people want to negotiate like that, okay? They want to have a win-lose situation. So the next one is win-win. The most famous book here is Getting to Yes. Have you heard of this book before? It's quite a famous book for negotiation. Other classes we're not going to use in this class. We're going to study a three-dimensional three negotiation rather than win-win. But we'll also study win-win. But this is a book we can use for the win-win negotiation. Okay. Focuses on creativity, so finding a creative solution 
So my sister and my brother both want to watch the same TV show at the same time. What's a creative solution? Hmm? Turn off the TV, do this. <laughs> We're looking for win-win. My sister watched the program, win-lose. My brother watched the program, lose-win. How can we make win-win? So my sister watched half and my brother watched half. <laughs> Record one of the programs, right? That's thinking creatively. We have, in the old days, we had VHS. You probably don't know VHS. You're too young. Do you know VHS? No. Big video, push in, not DVD. I use that and record the program. One of them. Okay? For example, my sister decides to record the program. And then, because my sister is going to watch one hour later, my brother does some favor for her, helps her to tidy her room. Okay? That's kind of thinking creatively. Find another way. So, this one operating is focusing on bra brainstorming. Do you understand brainstorming? Yes. Creative things. Finding out what are the interests of the other side. So, interest. Do you, are, are you more patient or less patient? Okay. Do you want your room cleaned? Yes, I want my room cleaned. So we think about people's interest and we find a creative solution. Here we can have better relationships. Then my brother and sister are happy, right? They're a good relationship. Then the problem is we can give up achievable gains against tough negotiators. So if we're negotiating against a win-lose negotiator, or somebody who's playing hardball, but we are being very cooperative and nice, right? we might find that we might make bad agreement votes. The other person might make a better agreement. So that's a little bit of a problem with win-win. But we're going to study about win-win also in this course. So the playbook for win-lose, playbook means, again, this is US, do you know American football? In American football, the coach has a book called his playbook. Inside the book, he makes a lot of plans, like the player is going to run here to get the ball. This player is going to block. So the playbook looks like this, plan. In the US, they use a playbook like you have a strategy or a plan, right? So the plan of the person who is doing win-lose, they want to find the opponent's weak spot. So my sister, she's 24, tall and big. My brother is just 12, he's quite weak, small. So his weak spot is physical, physical thing. So why don't I just knock him on the ground and take the remote control, right? So she's quite smart, right? But I didn't do that, I was just laughing at her. Even though I was about 22. Right? <laughs> Two years younger than her, but I'm standing there laughing. What are you doing? She's very serious, almost crying, fighting with the, my brother is trying to fight back. <laughs> in the end, my sister wins. <laughs> it's very funny, right? But anyway, she found my brother's weak spot. Another thing is, who makes the first offer? Who says the first price, right? That kind of thing. Make demands on the other person. You have to do this, you need to do this. Okay? Find some way of ignoring or overcoming the person's objection. So you have an objection, I'm just going to shout so I don't hear you, right? Or I'm going to find an excuse so I don't I don't have to listen to your objection. Threaten. Why threaten the other person? If you don't make the contract, I'll never do business with you again. So they make this kind of plan or playbook before the negotiation. Okay? What, how can I threaten them? What can I use to threaten them? Okay? Then they think about tactics. What kind of tactic can I use? Do you ever think about that when you negotiate with people? Can I threaten them? No? I always tell my wife, don't threaten, it's very bad for a relationship, right? Sometimes she wants to threaten me because she gets things done quickly, <laughs> right? So if I don't clean the kitchen, then she's not going to go out later, right? So she does some threatening like that. But it 
you know, she, maybe in her mind, she made this strategy, right? I need to make threats on him to get what I want, okay? Quickly. So, but threatening is not going to make good relationships. So I tell my wife, if you want to have a good relationship, then don't threaten me, right? And she says, but I want to get it done very quickly. I don't want to have to talk about it in a long way. So, anyway, win-win is uh, building trust with the other person. So, you want to make a good relationship with them and build trust. Maybe you go out together for dinner, right? Or you talk to them nicely and find out about them. Communicate clearly. So we tell the other side our interests, and they tell them, tell us their interests. So if we know each other's interests, we can make a deal or match. So we, we ask them about their interests. What, what can I do to help you? Right? What do you want? Do you understand the probe? Probing is like this kind of thing. Right? In medicine, we use probe to see inside people's brain or body. Right? Probing means asking questions in this case. Find a common ground. So find some things we have in common. Brainstorm. Do you brainstorm for new ideas? Cross good cross-cultural communication. So the other people like you and you feel the trust. You don't make any mistakes. Okay? For example, in China, they would spend a long time to negotiate. So if you understand, you're very patient and you wait for them and you go for dinner together, you wait a long time for the answer. If you're not patient, you get angry with them and you say, I need an answer by tomorrow. Right? Then it could be a problem. So here they learn about the cross-cultural area. And then they learn some counter tactic, just in case. In case you try to threaten me or do something, I have some counter. Do you understand counter? Counter is pushing back or going back against the other person. So the question is, you said in the last class you negotiate with your mother, or you negotiate with your brothers and sisters, or your friends, right? Or anybody. So discuss with your partner. Are you usually more of a win-win or win-lose negotiator when you negotiate with people? Or which one do you prefer? So can you sit with another student?
We're not talking about money, we would just say creating value. So you're, you're focusing on creating value, creating a good situation for the other person. Two, for two people. Okay. So, in this course, uh, we're going to focus on uh, 3D negotiation. This book is called 3D Negotiation, right? So there's win lose, there's win win, and then this one is a little bit different. It is 3D Negotiation that they teach at the Harvard, right? But we're also going to study about win win negotiation on a course from the University of Michigan. Okay, that they are teaching with just win win negotiation. Okay. So we have an online course we'll study about win-win, but we'll also study about 3D uh, negotiation. So what, just let's have a look at an overview. What is 3D negotiation? So it still has the tactics. Tactics are still important. But the deal design and the setup before the negotiation is also important. So they say that win-win is like one dimension, that they're mainly thinking about tactics, just tactics. Right? They are also thinking about these two things, so three things. Just they use 3D, just give a name. It's just a name for their idea. So let's tactics, you guys understand tactics, right? Like playbook. So let's move on to talk just overview to explain what is deal design. Do you understand design? Yes. So do you understand deal? Yes. Deal or agreement? So here they use the drawing board metaphor. Do you understand the drawing board? Drawing board we use in architecture or design, graphic design. The drawing board is just a board where you, you, write, you draw the plan, right? We draw the building we're going to make. We're going to make this building. Draw. Oh, I don't like that. Right? Erase. 
Try again. Maybe this one is better. Okay? That's a drawing board. So the idea of a drawing board here is creativity, invention, and fresh thinking. On, at the drawing board, we are starting. Really, drawing board is at the start, right? We're being creative and innovative. We're drawing the new building, coming up with ideas. Okay? So this is when we're designing the deal or the agreement. So what are we being creative here? We're finding hidden sources of economic and non-economic value. So finding value that might be hidden. So you, like you said, you like to try to find the value for both people, right? So we're going to try and think about how can we get value for two people. Example of here is somebody likes risk, somebody doesn't like risk. So we can put something in the contract for sharing the risk. The person who likes the risk can share more of the risk. So that kind of thing. So we focus on what's in the deal and what is the outcome of the deal. Outcome means result. So we find common ground between us and also analyzing differences. So this is the main difference between win-win. In win-win they also find a common ground and a common interest. But in this one, the deal design, they focus more on the difference. They think it's more important to focus on the difference between the two people. So an example of this is Egypt and Israel. They had a boundary negotiation about the Mount Sinai. It's on the border of Israel and Egypt. Okay? Do you understand boundary? There's a boundary between Korea and North Korea. So they, they had some negotiation in the 1950s, right, about that. So Egypt and Israel are having a negotiation about this. So if we analyze what is different, what is there different between Egypt and Israel? What do they want that's different? Egypt is interested in sovereignty. Do you understand sovereignty? Sovereign means National, like nationality or national, proud of your country, controlling, the country controlling more land, right? Sovereign basically means country, a sovereign. Israel is more interested in security. In the Middle East, Israel is very worried about security. Bowen, is that correct? So, by looking at these two differences, we could make a solution. We can make a DMZ. Do you understand DMZ? Yes. Where do you have DMZ? Korea? DMZ is the demilitarized zone. You don't know DMZ? In Korea? You guys know and you did the military service, right? How do you say DMZ in Korea? <laughs> What's the green word for DMZ? <laughs> so they make that kind of thing between Israel and Egypt. So Israel is happy. There's no. They what they were worried about was just like China is worried about, right? China don't want to have. Here's China. I'm not very good at art. Here's Korea. North Korea. <laughs> South Korea. So they don't want, China don't want the South Korea's military here, right? Yes. Or the US military, not just South Korea, mainly China doesn't want the US military on their borders. So in my opinion that's the main reason why North Korea still has their dictator, right? Because China doesn't want the American army base here, right? China is the main reason. If China changed their mind, then I think very quickly North Korea regime could fall. So the same for Israel, they don't want Egypt military on the border. So they agree to have demilitarized zone, Israel is happy, okay, no, no army there. Maybe in Korea they could say the same thing, if North Korea joins South Korea to keep China happy, you could say all of North Korea is DMZ. No American army in all of North Korea, right? Or no Korean army in North Korea. DMZ, or have a large DMZ between China, maybe 100 kilometers or 200 kilometers.
problems with Mao army. Okay, then uh, Egypt get to fly their flag. Doesn't really matter who owns the DMZ on a mountain with no no land or petrol or grass. Not really, right? Does it really matter who owns Dot Dot? What do you think? Is there any value from owning Dot Dot? Do you know Dot Dot? Ah, do. Mm -hmm. Do you think there is any value from owning Dot Dot? What economic value can you get? Is there tourism? Can you grow anything on Dot Dot? Is there oil under Dot Dot? Oh yeah, oil. Oh, yeah. There is. Oh, I don't know. That. Are you sure? You're not sure? It's on the top. There is a metal hydrate. It's a kind of source of the future. Okay, then that's not a good example, right? But some example where there's no economic value, just Egypt gets to fly their flag. Okay? Egypt is happy, Israel is happy. Okay? So how do we find that solution? By looking at the differences rather than the com common things, right? Israel wants security, Egypt wants the sovereignty. Egypt is proud of its country, okay? Which do you want more in Dokto? The minerals or the have the Korean flag on Dokto? Which is more important? Can Koreans think more about sovereignty? So maybe you could make a deal with Japan, right? Korea gets the sovereignty, they get to put the Korean flag on Dokto, and Japan get the minerals. <laughs> no? You think the minerals are more important? No, I mean, that makes sense. Because it's, it's Koreans. Yes, it's Koreans. You have the flag. It's Koreans, right? Just you made a contract that Japan can use the mineral. No, they can. Ireland has, uh, owns the sea around the west coast of Ireland, but Shell comes in and takes the gas. Because Ireland made a contract with Shell, they can take the gas. Pay a little, just they pay some tax to Ireland, right? So you could make a contract with Japan, you take all the minerals, pay us a little bit of tax, and we get doctor. It's all solved, right? I already solved two problems of North Korean doctor. <laughs> Today, right? So you can tell uh, the president, then be okay. <coughs> so anyway, if you analyze the differences between the two sides, what does Japan want, what does Korea want, right? Then we can uh, make a solution under this designing, designing the deal, right? Designing the negotiation of the deal. So understanding differences can help to separate different parts and give each party what it wants at the least cost to the other one. So we can separate the parts, separate the sovereignty from the minerals. Okay. And which part, what does each person want more? And what does each person not care about? Right? Then we can separate things and break them up by looking at the differences. Another example is an entrepreneur and a buyer have different forecasts for the future of a company. Do you understand entrepreneur? Do you want to be an entrepreneur? What is an entrepreneur? Company. Yes, set up a company, start a company. You understand set up? We're going to see often here in this class. Set up? What does set up mean? Another word in English. Make up, make or start. Okay? Set up a company. So the person who set up the company is an entrepreneur. So, for example, an entrepreneur sets up a company. And then there's a buyer, investor, who's going to buy the company or invest money in the company. But they have different ideas about the future. Who do you think is more optimistic? The entrepreneur or the buyer? Who's more optimistic about the future of the company? Do you understand optimistic? How do you say optimistic in Korean? It's like a positive. Yes. So who's going to be more positive about the future of the company? The owner of the company or the buyer? Owner. 
the owner, right? The owner thinks, oh, this company is going to be the best one in the world, right? But the buyer has a different idea. They think, maybe it will improve just 10 or 20% next year, right? So they have different ideas, but they have to decide on the price. The buyer wants to buy the company, okay? So how can we solve this? The buyer can pay based on the future performance. So we can make a contract. If the company performs very well, then the buyer gets more money, okay? Or the buyer has to pay more money to the owner. We have this in, with football players, based on performance, right? If the player scores a lot of goals, then they, the club has to pay more money in the future, okay? So we can find out by looking at different ideas, right? We think we're selling the football player. We think he's going to score a lot of goals. But the buyer thinks, no, he's not going to score a lot of goals. He'll just score 20 goals. But we think he'll score 30 goals. So we have difference, different idea. So we can solve this by making a, designing the deal differently. Okay? If the player scores 30 goals, then we'll pay more money. If the player scores 20 goals, we'll pay less money in the future. Okay? The same for companies. So other things we can think about that people have often have different ideas about is risk. I want to take a lot of risk, but you don't like risk. Patience. I want to get paid money now, but you don't want to get paid until next year. Okay? Costs. I have a high cost, you have a low cost. The image. I want to look good in front of my people. Say, if I'm the president of Korea, I want to look good like I got doctor of Korea, right? Maybe the Japanese president doesn't mind. Maybe Japanese people are not as interested. So he's not worried about the image. So we can have difference. People have different differences over different things when we're making a deal. So if we look at what's different, then it can help us. So do you have any questions so far about this win-win-win-lose uh, or this 3D deal design or differences? Oh, then let's take a break now. 10 minutes.